In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the RX 460 and seeing how it stacks up in 2024. The model that I'm looking at today is the MSI OC model, and it's the 2GB variant. Uh, I know that the VRAM amount is not a lot these days, so I would recommend looking at the 4GB model if you're trying to go for one of these. But really, 2GB is fine for the type of games you can play on this card anyways. Most of the games you're going to be enjoying are like smaller indie titles or sandbox games. But other than that, like this design is looking pretty good. It's really small, so it can fit in a lot of OEM towers. It doesn't require any power connectors at all, it just takes power from the PCIe slot. So it's ideal in a lot of situations, and I feel like it's definitely one of the less looked at cards. Here is a full list of the specs according to GPU-Z, if you'd like to look over them. Anyways, let's get right onto the games. First off, we have Minecraft Java running at 1440p native at 12 vendor distance, and we're using Optifine. And we're actually getting some pretty good performance here, getting about 200 to 300 FPS most of the time. Since it was such an easy title to run, I decided to just push it up to 1440p because I could, and yeah, it did pretty good. The next game I decided to try was Minecraft Dungeons at the 1080p fanciest preset. We hovered around 40 to 80 FPS depending on the situation and what's going on, so performance is pretty good. You have a bit of headroom if you want to either lower the resolution or lower the settings to get a solid 60 at all times, but it's definitely plenty of headroom there if you want to mess around with the settings. Really good performance overall. The next game I have is CS2 at the 1080p lowest settings, and we're hovering around 55 to 110 FPS depending on where you're looking, what's going on. Really not a bad casual experience, although if you want to play competitively, I would probably look at a different card or lower the resolution to 900 to 720p, something like that. Otherwise, completely fine as a casual experience, pretty decent, just not the most competitive experience in the world. The next game I have is Resident Evil 4 Remake at the 720p lowest settings with TAA and volumetric lighting on minimum. I enabled a few settings just to make it look a little better without impacting frame rates too much. It's not the prettiest experience in the world and it's definitely not the most stable frame rate, but I think you can make it work if you lock it to 30. It definitely stretches the ARX 460's legs a bit and it shows that some AAA games are still playable in it. So yeah, I, I wouldn't mind playing this at all if I absolutely had to. Next up we have Chivalry 2 at the 1080p low preset. We're getting about 30 to 60 FPS in this game and I would probably lower the resolution a bit more, maybe at 720p, just so you get a much more consistent experience because these games rely a lot on reaction times and parrying and you just generally have a better experience if you get higher frame rates. But at 1080p, it's a great casual experience, locked at 30 FPS and you'll be fine for the most part. Perfectly fine for a casual gamer. Next up we have Pixelgun 3D PC Edition at 1440p with no ATA aliasing and we're hovering around 70 to 90 FPS. This will vary depending on the map you play obviously, it's different maps, different sizes, different things going on. I'm not even sure how popular this game is, it's just like an old mobile game I used to play and I thought it was interesting that they released a PC version recently so here you go. Anyways, fine experience, had no issues playing on it at 1440p, pretty easy to run game so yeah, good experience. The next game we have is Pal World, running at 720p lowest settings with medium shadows and TSR enabled. We're getting about 30 to 50 FPS depending on what's going on, which is fine for a game like this, but I cannot promise decent performance later in the game once you start getting a bigger base and more things going on. It'll probably get a pre pretty low later on. Now, this game definitely has more room to get more performance later on through updates, so I wouldn't rule this game out entirely. You're getting an okay frame rate going into this. Not the best, but definitely playable. I also raised the settings where it mattered the most. Shadows made a huge difference to overall graphical fidelity, and TSR made the, the edges less jagged. So, you know, decent looks, decent performance. It's okay as a casual gamer. Next up, we have Teardown at 1080p, lowest settings, 75% render scale, and the DX12 render mode. I didn't really test any campaign now. I just use a pretty large intensive sandbox map just so we can get like the worst case scenario and honestly it was fine. It's still really fun even at lower frame rates and it's going to become CPU bound anyways the more you destroy stuff. So really great experience if you want to try this game out. Lots of fun. Next up, we have an indie horror game classic, Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion HD Renovation. We're running this at 1440p and we're getting about 150 to 250 FPS, so really good performance. Obviously, it's a very simple and cutesy game, but it really goes to show you that a lot of indie games will run really good on this, on this GPU, and you know, you should definitely consider the enormous indie library that exists on sites like Game Jolt or Itch.io. 
final game we have is another indie game and it's Dragon Wrestlers 2. We're running a 1080p with mixed settings and screen space reflections and we're hovering around 50 to 70 FPS depending on what's going on in the map. This is one of those indie games where it's really fun with friends to just mess around and goof around with. I've had a lot of fun in this game and it's just really fun to play overall. It's definitely well suited for a card like the RX 460. Anyways, really fun game, lots of fun can be had on this GPU and this is definitely one of those games that you should check out. In conclusion, the RX 460 is a great buy if you're looking for a low profile, low power, low cost GPU just to play some light games or just for general casual gaming. It'd be a great fit for like a Dell office PC just to slap it in there, give it some extra bump in performance. And it's definitely great for general usage stuff. In fact, this whole video has been made with the RX 460 still in my system, so good for content creation too if you need that. Overall though, if you see this GPU for a decent price, definitely consider it. Just make sure you keep in mind that there are two variants. There's the 2GB variant and the 4GB variant. The 4GB variant will probably be preferred in most cases, but in this video, the 2GB variant was fine for the most part. So really it's up to you if you think the extra 2GB of VRAM is worth it. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I appreciate you stopping by and watching it. Thank you. Thank you for watching.